Boom. All right, guys, what's up? Want to go over addresses in Solidity. What is an address in Solidity? So you guys are used to using normie programming languages like JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, and other languages that are similar, okay? So you guys are already accustomed to normal data types like strings, integers, variables, so whatever kind that you can think of, right? Um, <clears throat> but with Solidity, we have what's called the address data type. Now, obviously, if you're at, if you came to this video, I'm assuming that you guys already know what the Ethereum network is and what Solidity code is used for. So I'll save all that for later. But if you guys aren't used to doing code in Solidity, you're probably wondering, what is this new data type that I've never used before called address? Okay. And an address is really just like every other primitive data type in every other language. Okay. Um, actually, there's two addresses in Solidity, and they're pretty much both identical. Okay. Um, they're both 20 byte values, uh, which, if you guys don't know, is the size of an Ethereum address. All right. Obviously, because that's what it's used for in Solidity. And so if you guys see here, I got Remix pulled up, all right? And I already made a contract. I'm just calling this contract addresses, all right? So I'll just go ahead and I'll start by showing you guys the two different types of addresses. So first, we just have regular address, all right? And yes, address is the keyword. I'm gonna make this guy public and I'm just gonna call it underscore my address, all right? I'm not gonna instantiate it. I'm just gonna initiate it, okay? And I'm gonna say address payable, all right? Because this is the second data type. And yeah, you need two keywords. You need address and then payable if you want it to be of value address payable, all right? I'm gonna also make this guy public and I'm gonna call this guy my MetaMask wallet, okay? So the only really most important things that you need to know about both address and address payable are just the members that you have access to, right? Aside the fact that I already told you guys that it's a 20 byte value and that a 20 byte value is the size of an Ethereum address um, because obviously we know what that's used for, right? But what members are there? So first and foremost, uh, both address and address payable have access to the balance member. So if I use my address payable variable called my MetaMask wallet and I use the dot operator and say balance, you notice I'll get some syntax highlighting on that because that is a member of the address quote unquote class in Solidity. And I'm just saying class because I'm trying to relate this as close as I can to you guys to other programming languages like Java. Okay. But what makes address payable different than regular address? So with address payable, I have two extra members that I have access to. And one of those is going to be transfer, all right? And then one is going to be send, all right? I believe send is deprecated, so you probably don't need to be using that. And they pretty much do the same thing. So not really super important, but I just wanted to note that, all right? Obviously, I'm getting an error here because you're not supposed to be using these this way. But I digress. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to write a function real quick that we can use to interact with a regular address. So I'm just going to say function because that is the keyword to create a function in Solidity. And I'm just going to call this function set meta mask address. All right. The function is going to take in the parameters an address payable. And I'm just going to call this guy my Addy because we love Addies here, all right? And make this public, this function public because I want, I want to be able to access this elsewhere, all right? And then all I'm going to do really is I'm just going to take my quote unquote global address over here called my MetaMask wallet, all right? And I'm going to set it equal to my Addy, which is the guy that's being passed in here, okay? If you guys don't know these variables that I have, just to clear it up here at the top of the contract, out in the open, uh, the same way that you'd think of a global variable in another language, this is kind of the same, except, yes, they're accessed globally, uh, 
inside this contract and actually in other con if other contracts want to be interacting with this contract, they can also access that as well. I'm sure you guys hear my horse dog gallivanting in the background, so I apologize for that. Nonetheless, um, yeah, so these global variables in, in Ethereum or in Solidity on the Ethereum network, these are going to be what's called state variables. And these state variables are going to exist on chain after the contract is deployed. All right. So these aren't going to be like, like if you think about a regular programming language like Java, where something would be running on the computer and it has memory inside of the RAM, this is pretty much kind of like permanent memory. Okay. So just something I wanted to note. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to compile this contract, even though I already have auto compile on. And now I'm going to go over here. And one thing to note, guys, I'm using the JavaScript virtual machine. I'm not going to like deploy this to the test network. All right. Uh, so basically when I'm debugging and running this program, it's going to be debugging and ran on a JavaScript virtual machine that's mimicking the Ethereum virtual machine. Okay. Just wanted to note that. All right. And if I go ahead and deploy this guy, you guys will see I have a new contract down here. And I got this cool, these cool little GUI buttons right here, right? So you see an orange one and it says, it's called set MetaMask address. So obviously this is a little button that I can use to interact with the function that I wrote called set my MetaMask address. And another thing that you guys don't know about Remix is you pretty much get little getter buttons for any kind of state variable that you create. You guys can see I have a getter for both my address and my MetaMask address. And they're both blank right now, right? <clears throat> because we haven't assigned anything to them. So if I click these, we should get the default address value, which is pretty much just zero. Yeah, just hex, zero. And the same for the my MetaMask one. All right, so now that's all said and done, let's actually shove a value into this function, which we can pass it into this little text box over here. And we can click this button, execute this function after typing in or pasting rather an address inside of here, and then this state variable, my MetaMask wallet, should now be set equal to the address that I assigned it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my MetaMask wallet, literally. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to copy this address to the clipboard. Yeah, if you guys see, I'm using the Ropstein test network right now from a MetaMask wallet because I just plead that it would be politically incorrect to show my real MetaMask wallet, right? Even though there's nothing really in there anyway. Nonetheless, all right, let's, uh, so I went ahead and pasted that address inside of here, which is, you know, my MetaMask test, net, test wallet address, all right? So I'm going to click this button and then this function should execute. Once this function is executed, we're gonna take the address being passed into the parameters of this function and set our state variable, or as you guys might be familiar with, a, our global variable, and set it equal to my addy, which is the address being passed inside of this function, all right? So let's click it and let's test it out and make sure it works. I think it worked. Let's see. All right, now let me click my MetaMask address again, and lo and behold, look at that. You guys can see. I do indeed have the address assigned to that variable now that I passed in. If you want to double check it, what's the last four? 226F, let's confirm that. Well, I go into MetaMask up here, all right? 226F, all right. Congratulations, everyone. We've all figured out addresses and solidity and now you guys are all geniuses. But to reiterate, if I can zoom out of here correctly, to reiterate, so, what did I do? Uh, all I did was I took an address from, from, if you'll let me draw, from my MetaMask wallet, okay? And then I passed that address into this GUI over here. I pressed this button that was given to us via the Remix IDE because the Remix IDE is pretty fucking cool. All right, and then I'm gonna press this button. This function right here executes, all right? The address that I passed literally inside of this GUI is getting passed into the parameters of this function under the name of my Addy, all right? And then 
what I'm doing over here is I'm setting my state variable called my MetaMask wallet equal to my Addy, which is coming from inbound from the parameters, which we're getting from pasting inside this text field and clicking this button, which I copied from my MetaMask wallet. And thus the result is that variable called my MetaMask wallet being set equal to my MetaMask wallet's address. All right, not rocket science, folks. Hope that makes sense. If you guys liked what you saw, drop a like, leave a comment if you have a question or you have anything else, eliftburger.com, developerdirection.com, at eliftburger on Instagram, and I'm out.